Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. Today we're going to be talking about emotional affairs. Um, yesterday we talked about physical affairs. If you missed it, go to the YouTube channel, Sharonda Parker, and play catch up because this is going to be my little series that I'm doing on the different types of affairs because... Um, Sometimes we don't necessarily know what to call it, you know, but um, let me get a few things out the way before I get into this live. Yesterday, I got my second vaccination. Um, I did the Pfizer, um, had absolutely zero side effects. So the first time I went, no side effects. Yesterday I went, no side effects. So that is awesome. Um, I just wanted to share that with you all because you know some people are kind of on the fence and I just want to give my testimony. Um, there was a local teacher who posted up a book on her Facebook called Cooking with Semen 100 Delicious Recipes. So me being the person that I am, I absolutely had to order this book. I went on Amazon. I was like, oh my God, it's a book and it's a real book. Let me order this book because I had this dream that the PPG store was going to be a sexual resource center. So when you think about a, a, a resource center, you think about a place that you can go to get a wealth of information about anything, especially pertaining to a certain topic. Well, I deal with relationships and sex and all of this kind of stuff. So I was like, you know what? This will be great to add to my library because I have so many books. And I love to read, I love to learn. Not that I wanted to cook anything with semen, I really just wanted to see what the hype was about, right? Book comes in on yesterday, I'm so excited. I'm like, oh my God, my book then came in. Opens the book. Y'all see that? It's a journal. <laughs> it does not say that in the description at all. So that means that I was like, okay, cool. Now when I'm driving and I'm and I'm in, I'm a, I'm gonna keep it in my purse. And a lot of times throughout the day, you know how you have a thought, but then you like, you know what? I'm gonna remember that. Now I have a place to be able to jot those little thoughts down so that I can come back to it. So I said, well, Lord, if that's what it was meant for, then that's what it's meant for. This is gonna be my little my little journal to jot down my little thoughts that I have. Um you know, throughout the day, then I feel like I want to discuss it or whatever. Cause it's so much that I, I say that I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I talk about that. I'm going to make sure that I remember, um, to address that. And then all of a sudden I can't remember it. I can't remember what it was that I was thinking about. So yes. Um, if you're looking for a gag gift to give to people that like to read, I think this would be a great gag gift. Okay. Um, I had someone to say, Sharonda, I watched your video about the finger stimulation. My husband is absolutely uh, against vibrators. He he does not want me using vibrators at all. Okay, so one thing that we know about marriage is there is power in agreement. Um, I'm not going to ever encourage you to do anything to disrupt your household. So if it's already understood that, you know, your husband feels a certain type of way about vibrators, those are the things that actually hum, make noise. Mm -hmm. These are finger stimulators, meaning they do not vibrate. They're just covers that you can put over your fingers to be able to rub your clitoris or to be able to rub his nuts, testicles, whatever you like to call them. And you'll still get some additional stimulation versus the bare feeling of your finger okay if you come to me and you tell me that you got a problem i'm gonna come with a solution because that's what i do i solve problems people come to me with sexual issues and i solve them that's, that's what i do so these are finger stimulators they do not vibrate and it will still give you that a little extra uh that you're looking for okay so Yes, these are on the website as well. They're very, very cheap. Very cheap. I brought this out today because it is that time of year. Spring is officially here. People are about to start going on vacation, spring breaks, and all of that kind of stuff. And you got to get that jungle love under control. 
This is my coochie system, okay? We have the shaving cream. This is the natural one with no um, uh, fragrance or anything like that. This is a shaving cream, but what it does is locks the moisture in the hair follicle to prevent you from bumping up and chafing and dealing with the itching and all of this kind of stuff. So this is the shaving cream and this is the aftershave protection mist, okay? We just restocked this. So when I finish this video, I will be updating the quantities on the website so that they can actually match. But yes, Coochie is back in stock. Cause I know some of y'all like me, some of y'all just old fashioned. And when I find things that work for me, I utilize it. I, I just ain't got there yet mentally to go uh, on the table, lay open and bust my puss open and let the people wax me. I, I just ain't got there yet mentally. I just, it just ain't sitting well in my spirit. You know, I'm happy for the people that do it and I've heard that it's a real clean look. I heard that the, the pussy look brand new, like a newborn baby. I I heard I have heard all of that. Um, and if that's your method, great. But for those of you all who are like me that just ain't got there yet, I just ain't got there yet. I'm, I'm not there. I, we take care of it ourselves. Between me and Spencer, we work it out, okay? But this is the coochie system. So let's get on to this emotional affair. So yesterday we talked about physical affair. That is when actual sexual intercourse actually takes place. Um, a lot of times it's a physical attraction. It's a, you know, visual. Um, but emotional is a whole nother ball game. Because let me tell you something, when feelings get involved, that's something to deal with. That is something to really have to tackle. Now, most times with men, they have physical affairs, meaning that it's strictly physical. Sometimes there's absolutely no emotional attachment. Sometimes they don't even know the person's name that they're dealing with. Like that's how disconnected they are. But physical affairs can bring on all kind of, all affairs bring on hurt. All affairs bring on um, betrayal. All, all affairs do that. So we don't have to argue about if, uh, if the person finds out if they're going to be hurt. If the person that finds out, will they feel betrayed? You know, is the trust broken? All affairs do that, okay? But physical affairs can bring on STDs. Physical affairs can bring on... Um, Pregnancies, physical affairs can bring on um, all types of other things to where things are transferred and all of this kind of stuff. You can bring something home to your your um, significant other. That's physical affairs. Emotional affairs. Baby, this is when your feelings and your heart then got caught up in it. Most women have emotional affairs. And sometimes it grows into a physical affair and sometimes it just remains as emotional and an emotional affair is the type of cheating or an emotional attachment between between a person and someone who isn't their partner or spouse okay this can happen even if you never engage in physical action meaning holding hands kissing um actual intercourse that does not mean that it's not an affair. It can actually still be an affair. Okay. Um, an emotional affair, a lot of times, the connection comes from communication. Meaning that you're sharing certain things with a person that may really be um, borderline inappropriate to share about yourself, your spouse, and the thing is, the, the feeling in the relationship, it grows, okay? Now, this is where it gets crazy because with women, a lot of times, it starts as an emotional affair, and then it turns into a physical affair. And when that happens, this is when you start seeing people ready to pack their shit up and leave their household. When men do this, now, see, the thing about when you're dealing with men, when men do this, a lot of times, and they start to invest emotionally, they detach from their spouse at home, okay? And then when it turns into physical, them too, they ready to pack their shit up and go. And they say, Gladys, that's all for uh, Harlem Nights if you never say, tell, uh, tell your mother I'm never coming home again. You know, 
that's how those type of things happen to where, you know, the person is saying, oh, he going to leave his wife. Oh, he going to leave his wife because not only is it a physical affair, but now it is an emotional affair. Emotional affairs are very dangerous, very, very dangerous. Now, when you talk to a man about an affair, he, if you ask him what's worse, he'll say it's worse because she fucked him. And he heartbroken because she gave that pussy up. He heartbroken because it was an actual physical connection because that's what he can relate to. Women, they're heartbroken behind a lot of times the emotional affair because they're feeling like, I'm no longer number one in your life. I'm no longer the one that's on your mind. I'm no longer the one that you craving to be around and give that attention to because you emotionally connected somewhere else. So if you ever ask a person, which is worse, a lot of times you're dealing with which gender you're asking. Men feel like physical affairs are worse. Women feel like emotional affairs are worse. And that's, that's the, the gist of it. Now, let me just say this here. If you have a man or a woman, but mostly men, and he got a woman on another side of town, and he over there and he is investing, taking this woman on dates, paying bills at her house, all of this kind of stuff, baby, that, that ain't even no affair. I just gotta, I gotta let you know that ain't no affair. Baby, he got another family. You didn't, you got a sister wife. He has put himself in a position to be responsible for these people on the other side of town. So that ain't just no, I can hit it and quit it and it's gone. He is attached and he literally is operating with two families. So a lot of times when we think about affairs, we think about things that can actually end and maybe we can work on and maybe we can fix and maybe this, this, that, the other. But when you're dealing with an issue like that, baby, that ain't no affair. That's a whole nother family. So ladies, because I'm, I'm talking to ladies, so that's why I'm addressing ladies. Ladies, if that is what you're dealing with, where is your husband got a whole nother family on the other side of town, he ain't about to let that go easily the same way he ain't about to let his family go with you easily. And at this point, you got to make the choice if you want to, if you want to have, allow him to have a second wife, even if it's not a legal marriage, that's what you're dealing with. He got a whole nother family that he not willing to give up the same way he not willing to give up his family with you. So I just want to make sure y'all understand the difference between these things, because sometimes when you see that your man is having an affair and he keep going back to the same woman over and over and over and over again. Baby, that ain't no affair. That's his woman. He in a relationship. He invested over there. The same way he eating puss over here, he eating puss over there too. The same way he paying bills over here, he paying bills over there too. The same way he loving up on the kids over here, he loving up on the kids over there too. It's a difference. It is a huge difference. So you got to understand what you dealing with. So when y'all come to me, and you're talking about sex coaching and all of this kind of stuff, relationship coaching, and you pay your money and I send you that questionnaire over, a lot of times when I get those questionnaires back, the wives try to minimize the role that the other woman have in his life. And the thing is, once you start talking to me and I start addressing certain things, it becomes reality to the wife that... This ain't just no he could leave this woman alone type of situation. Because not only is he, he emotionally invested over there, he physically invested, he financially invested. He giving his time, his attention. Baby, he got a whole other family. So when you decide to come to get um, relationship culture, sex culture, whatever y'all like to call it, life coaching, whatever you want to call it, when you come over to me, I laid out plain for you. Now you got to make a decision if you're going to accept your sister wife or not. Or if you can go ahead and file your paperwork. Because this ain't what you signed up for. Because a lot of times what you're dealing with is him leaving her is not an option for him. Because if he could do it, he would have done it a long time ago. If he wanted to do it, 
he would have done it a long time ago. If he wanted to end communication, he would have ended it a long time ago. So it, it tells me that it's something over there that she's fulfilling for him. Because if it wasn't, he could just go and bust a nut with any random woman here, there, the other. But if he consistently got this person in his life, it's something, it's some type of void that she's feeling for him. And that's just the reality that we're dealing with. That, that's the reality. Okay. Physical affairs, emotional affairs, uh, micro. I'm going to go ahead and knock this out because next week I want us to be on to something else. I said I was going to um, be on this the whole week, but I'm just going to go ahead and knock this out because micro is your work wife, your, your little... Uh, you're flirting at work. Your inappropriate relationship at work. You talking about how you eat that dick up at work. You talking about how you knock that pussy out the frame at work. Inappropriate. But yet, it ain't got to the level of physical or emotional. But it's definitely inappropriate. It's flirting on social media. Flirting at the wait flirting with the waitress that bring that you go you go to a diner every day and eat. And you just started noticing that you there every day. And you over there flirting and talking. And now you at work and every day you look forward to lunch. So you can go over here because you know such and such is going to be there. Yeah. You got your apps and all your stuff set up online. And then you got a whole fake page on your phone. In other words, a lot of people don't know that you can put these little... um. I seen it where they had a calculator. When you click on it, it looked like a calculator. On your app, on your phone, it looks like a calculator. But when you open it up and you put the code in, it unlocks some other shit. A whole nother set of pictures and galleries and all kind of stuff like that. See, when you go into them extremes to be secretive and all of that kind of stuff, that's that's a micro level, but it, it will turn into something else. Constantly talking to your ex. You over there at the football game with Keisha. Because your wife, your wife ain't in the football. So you got your ticket. And your wife know you're going to the game. But Keisha got her ticket too. But see, your wife don't know Keisha got her ticket. And all of a sudden, you and Keisha then just all of a sudden magically appeared at the motherfucking game together. Yeah, it's levels to this shit. Levels. Yes. You in the social club. He in the bike club. You know that every event you go to, Mr. Joe gonna be there. So you making sure you buy all the tickets to the events that you know Mr. Joe Bike Club gonna be at because you trying to run into Mr. Joe. So you can have your lit, you know, be all cute. When you went and put your, picked your outfit out, you picked your outfit out because you know Mr. Joe gonna be there and you want to make sure them titties sitting right so Mr. Joe can see them. Ooh, Mr. Joe, put me on the back of your bike and take me around the block a couple of times. Or he might be in the four-wheeler club. Ooh, Mr. Joe, put me on your four-wheeler and take me through the woods. And all of a sudden, you holding on to Mr. Joe all tight. And it's just, come on. Y'all know. People know when it's inappropriate. You, the thing is, with this micro level, it's about your intentions. It's about your intentions. And some of y'all intentions don't be right. Financially, we talked about this. Oh, when you start lying about the finances, because you over there treating everybody to lunch with y'all hard earned money. Yeah, you over there dope, donate. Suppose you, you know, this woman child got an organization, Girl Scout cookies. You ain't gonna just go buy one box of Girl Scout cookies. You trying to show off. Oh, give me the case. Hey. It's about your intent. Yeah, it's about your intent. Oh, I'm going out. Okay, you going out, but now you over there and you buying drinks and round after round after round after round. You don't think them finances could be used for something else? It's about your intent. Yeah. Is flirting cheating? Depends on who you ask. I don't feel like it's cheating, but some people do. Some people do feel like flirting is cheating. 
I feel like flirting is just human nature, but some people feel like it's cheating. Okay, first off, what is flirting? Flirting is basically when you are intentionally trying to get the attention of another person. Whether it's batting your little eyes, whether it's this smile. Mm -hmm. Y'all know how to flirt. Y'all do this shit. Yeah. Whether it's just these constant compliments. Y'all know what flirting is. How do you know if flirting is cheating? Now, see, this is what I have to always tell my husband. Cause see, let me tell you something about men. Men will act like they don't know. They will act like they didn't know she was flirting with them. If you find yourself over there in the conversation a little bit too long, cut that shit short. Yeah, some people, some men act like they didn't know. When you get in, in your inbox, so, hey, how you doing, what you doing? All this here, that ain't got nothing to do with no business. That person opening up the door to flirting, but you you obligated to shut that shit down. I shut it down all damn day. If you ain't coming directly to me with a question, I'm shutting that shit down. I don't need your hello beautifuls. I don't need your how you doing beautiful. I don't I don't need all that shit. Some of y'all like that shit in y'all inbox. Good morning, beautiful. Hello, beautiful. What you doing, beautiful? And my thing is. What the fuck you want? Let's get to let's get to the business. Do I need to send you a web, the website information or do I need to send you an invoice? Which direction do we need to go with this shit? Cause that that's how my mind operates. Let's see behaviors that people consider cheating: grabbing or touching in inappropriate areas, going to event, having dinner, buying gifts to someone who is not your partner. Uh, constant texting. Y'all be on there. I need a text buddy. I need a text friend. I never like that shit. I'm a communicator, meaning that we need, if, if we handle the business, we need to talk face to face. When I talk to my husband, I try to ver verbally talk to him. We do very, very little texting because things can get misconstrued via text. Texts don't have emotions. Texts don't have all of that kind of stuff. So I'm real funny about all them texts and I don't like the motherfucking emojis. That is for the children. But you know, that's neither here or there. Uh, being on the internet, chat room, social media, with the intention of flirting or getting other people's information. Yeah. Going on dates with someone who is not your partner. Some people like to play, play wordplay. I got a meeting. Is it really a fucking meeting or is it a date? See, this is that borderline shit I'm talking about. Because some people don't know the difference between meetings and dates. A meeting... It's going to be in a place that is somewhere that you can act. A lot of times they have meeting rooms to where you can have dinner and then still sit here with pencil and paper and have room to spread shit out and all that. Those are meetings. Dates, dim lights, soft music playing, all kind of wine and all kind of this, this, that, the other. Come on. We know the difference. We're not about to play the game. Yeah. Um, flirting and teasing. Come on. We ain't about to be talking about your big old booty and your big old titties and your print and them uh, gray sweatpants. Come on now. We know the difference. What leads to it? If we have the answer to that, we'll all be rich. But I honestly believe what leads to cheating is personal choices. Uh, the way you perceive things in your relationship, wanting to see it the way you want to see it to justify you doing what you're doing. Oh, she don't fix up. But you're not going to say that she working a turnaround and she work a job that requires her to, you know, she doing some type of manual labor or she a chef and she walking around with a chef hat on and a damn chef jacket on. Your thing is, and this is what this person do every day to provide an income. If you want her pretty all day, put her in a position where she can be pretty all day. Put her in a position where she can sit home all day and just be pretty for you. Put her in a position. But if she got to get out there and go get it and work and grind it out just like everybody else in the world, then we know that sometimes she can't get pretty every day. Especially if she don't have a job that allows her to be able to do that. But if she's in sales and something like that, then she may have time to fix herself up. But what happened if she got to get the baby ready for daycare because it's her job to take the baby to the daycare? 
before work. It's her job to get her. It's her job to get the children together before work. Sometimes she don't really have a lot of time to be able to put into her. So, cause she getting children together. Come on, we gotta be realistic. We we gotta be realistic. Oh, the other thing is, oh, I went out there and stepped out because she ain't, she don't fuck me no more. I barely get in the pussy. Well, are you freeing her up to be able to have time to rest up to be able to put that pussy on you? Are you doing these things? See, when, when, when men come to me and they get to talking about all this shit that the women ain't doing, my thing is, what are you doing to help this situation? Another one that I got real recently, she ain't having sex because of the birth control. Well, sir, have you considered a vasectomy? That way she don't have to take the birth control. See, the, the, when, when you start coming to me with all of this different shit that she ain't doing, my response is always going to be, sir, what are you doing? What are you doing to help this situation? Oh, she picked up weight and all of this. Is you bringing her snacks at night, sir? Are you bringing her paints of ice cream at night? What are you doing to help the situation? Or are you bringing her, or are you sending her an edible arrangement? Are you uh, bringing fruit? Are you requesting, some men love to talk about women weight, but then you want these old big ass meals every day. You want rice and potatoes and shit every day. But then when she started cooking healthy, you talking about don't know how to eat all that. Don't know how to like all that. But so she's trying to cook healthy so she can keep her waistline together. But you complaining about the, the, the nutrition in the house. So what she got to do, cook two meals? Got to cook something for you and then something separate for herself? Well, now she not about to have no energy to fuck you. Come on, you got to meet people halfway. And it's always... Oh, was well, she letting herself go? Well, sir, you ain't keeping it together either. Now, come on now. I'm looking at the, you, you getting the OA spread too? You ain't going to get them haircuts on time like you used to. It's certain things that you're not doing either. Oh, she walking around like I, the one I read today. What he said? Oh, she walk around with the bonnet on. But then when the FedEx people come and the mail people come, she going taking it off and going and run and do this here. But then when, when she at home with me, I get this version of her. But the people in the streets get another version of her. Oh, okay. My thing is we can't be we can't be unrealistic and feel like our spouses are gonna be glammed up all day, every day. Because we all have downtime. So my thing is, don't let that be your excuse. Because all of those are excuses. Now, let me say this here. Because, and I'm going to end on this note. I think Derek Jackson's wife is uh, a woman of God. But when I see her, I don't necessarily see a woman of God that is balanced. So, for all y'all that's into the church and super, super, super religious, God calls us to be balanced. Not religious. It's, a, it's one thing to be spiritual and to have a belief system, but it's another thing to be super religious. And sometimes when women are super religious, even that could be a turnoff in a marriage. Yeah. You can't even put a song on because, oh Lord, it vexes their spirit. You know, that type of stuff. I've seen that even in my own family. Woman wouldn't even cook. You open up the pot, she got scriptures and shit tore up all in the pot. Talk about spiritual food. Like, even that can be a turnoff. You get what I'm saying? So we want to make sure that we, even in our spiritual walk, we remain balanced. We want to understand that it's okay to get on your knees and pray, but you get on your knees and suck some dick too. You know, you got to be balanced in that. All right? I'm just making sure I'm going over everything. All right, here's some statistics. 72% of men believe that sexual affairs are worse than emotional affairs. 69% of women believe that emotional affairs are worse than sexual affairs. 76% of people would forgive their partner strictly for sexual affairs. 80% of people will forgive their partner for emotional affairs. Wow. So 8% will, will forgive for an emotional affair, even though that's the one that pulls at the heartstrings. Um... If you got any, if you want information about um, how to rebuild, 
Watch the series on my YouTube, uh, Life After the Affair. It's a whole series about rebuilding after infidelity. And then there's another video I have on forgiveness. Um, so I have different videos on YouTube, so I don't have to go into too much detail about all of this other stuff because we already have videos in place for that. Um, the question isn't about is, is it cheating? The question is, is it forgivable? I honestly believe as a Christian woman of God, we have to extend forgiveness to people. Listen to me good. We have to extend forgiveness. I hear some people talk about some, oh, I can never forgive. You know, I just think that when, when you got a certain type of faith walk, then you understand the way forgiveness works. Now, what I did not say is you have to remain in a relationship. See, you can forgive somebody, but then God gives you free will, the choice to stay or the choice to continue on. So my thing is your forgiveness ain't got nothing to do with you remaining. If you decide to remain, that is a personal choice. The two have nothing to do with one another. Meaning that, baby, I could forgive you. I could free you. Meaning, I forgive you. I ain't, I ain't holding that grudge against you. I ain't angry with you. I, you know, I'm hurt about the situation, but I ain't walking around bitter and angry and all this. But I choose not to be with you anymore because I can't trust you. See, that's a whole different type of conversation. And a lot of times, even as Christian women, a lot of Christian women believe that just because you forgave a person, it means that you got to remain in the marriage. And that is not true. That is your choice. God gives us all free will. All right. Hoo, hoo, hoo. I think that is going to. I think that's going to wrap it up because I don't want to go through the all of the excuses that people say, you know, um, I, well, I can't go through them because there's things that a lot of people have heard before. One excuse, it was only lust. Another excuse, um, it was just sex. Another excuse, it wasn't really an affair, it was a friendship. Another excuse, but you hurt me first by doing A, B, C, D. And then another excuse, you stopped trying. Um, I mean, we can go on and on and on with excuses, but that is going to wrap up. This series, um, we got three videos back to back to back about infidelity. Don't forget to get your cookbook. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah cooking with semen. Don't forget to get your cookbook. And I just brought this because this was to remind me to let y'all know that I got my vaccination. I have to do things because as you start getting older, you start forgetting all kind of shit. All right. I hope everybody getting ready for spring break. I hope y'all getting ready. Spring break is around the corner. Um, March is, we, we pretty much about to wrap March up. March is steak and blowjob. We've already done that. April, we have International Lingerie Day. April, we have all of these, um, what is it? Uh, International Lingerie Day. I should have wrote this down. Um, Oh, Cupcakes and Conalingas, that is in April, and, um, oh, April, Jack Rabbits, Rabbits and Eggs, Rabbits and Eggs is also April, so you'll see me doing a lot of stuff about the rabbit vibrators, and you'll see me talking about the eggs, and I see a lot of y'all, um, have actually been coming into the store getting the just beaded eggs, the little five dollar eggs that you beat their dick with. I've been seeing that a lot of y'all have been getting the just beaded eggs and a lot of y'all have been getting the bundles online. So good good job for you. I see y'all been getting the bundles and all of that kind of stuff. Take advantage of the bundles. I put them bundles together to be able to give you the best deal online. All right. You all be blessed. You all be safe. You all enjoy the rest of your weekend. I will catch up with y'all again on Monday. Um, I don't know if y'all remember Jaleesa that used to work, um, for me. Today is Jaleesa's wedding, so I will be attending online virtually. Congratulations, Jaleesa and John. 
on your union. I am super excited for both of you all. All right. You all be blessed. You all be safe.